Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my office. This is where a lot of the magic happens, where I do a lot of my productivity work, as well as where I do a lot of my video editing. Um, so I have two different computers. I have my 16 inch work computer and then also have my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro that I do a lot of my video editing on. Anyway, the reason why I want to make this video is because I'm about to box up this Samsung 43 inch smart monitor. And before I do that, I want to make a video to explain why this 43 inch monitor is not for me. There are definitely a lot of things I love about it, but ultimately I think the cons outweigh the pros. And so therefore I want to make this video to hopefully help you make an informative decision. If you're looking to buy something in this range of a screen size, and specifically maybe this Samsung 43 inch smart monitor and help you decide whether or not this is the right one for you. So by no means this is going to be a technical review. I'm just a regular Joe trying out bigger screens to help improve my productivity in 2022. Unfortunately, like most human beings, I have to work within a budget. And the goal of this project initially is to replace my two 27 inch screens. I was such a noob when I first got those screens. There are two different screens with two different types of display. One's an IPS, one's a VA. And ended up when I'm doing a lot of my creative work, it was insane. It's basically impossible to calibrate the two monitors. I also wanted to improve my productivity. And I heard there are studies that shows the more screen real estate that you have, the better it is for the productivity. With that in mind, I set up to see how big of a monitor I can find without going to a TV. I set out to find the 43 inch monitor. In fact, I tried looking for like a 49 inch. I tried to find as big as I can. And I settled on the 43 inch because it was within the budget. I also looked at the Samsung G9, but it was such way too expensive for me. I know a great monitor costs at least at a minimum starting like a thousand dollars and i definitely don't want to spend that much money so the samsung m7 or am702 the 43 inch version is actually 599 at best buy and it was cheaper before it was like 530 brand new me being super cheap i even bought it open box so i got it for around 470 so i got a pretty good deal on this and the goal is that I can just replace both of my screens, have one giant screen here. I'll be able to snap windows left and right, side by side kind of thing to replace the dual screen function. But at the end of the day, I didn't find my productivity increase at all. I'm not really sure is it because I spent a lot of my time trying to juggle windows. And I even bought this app called Magnets uh, to help me at least have shortcuts to kind of snap windows in place. So if I hit control option, enter, it will do a full screen. And so this actually did help, but I don't find myself being more productive. In fact, I find myself looking around more for like the smallest things. For example, me trying to like close out a browser, I have to kind of go stretch my neck from left to right trying to find that little red dot on the corner if you are a Mac user, you know, or the little yellow dot and then trying to find that and be able to minimize the windows. I feel like I'm having a hard time constantly having to move my neck and ended up I feel like I'm doing a lot more work than I actually needed to in order to be productive. That's con number one is I think the screen maybe relatively to how close I'm sitting, even though I feel like that's at least around three feet already, it's still too big ergonomics wise. And the other thing is that the monitor is so tall. Um, so not only do I have to worry about the, the width, my neck is constantly looking up as well. If I'm looking up all the time, again, there's just like neck strains. It's not as glorifying as, as you may imagine when using a 43 inch screen. Not to even mention the fact that I'm like the worst at ergonomics. So maybe with like the right ergo setup, uh, this will be great. But for a mere model such as myself, I don't have specialists come in to set up my home office for me. This is the best I can do. And the other thing about this Samsung monitor is the ambient lighting. To me, it's not very good. It just changes all the time. 
Uh, even if the, if the lighting is consistent, sometimes it would just like go dimmer or sometimes it would just go brighter. And I have to keep adjusting the color profile and it got to a point where I just reset everything. During my second day of using this, at one point I got massive migraine. And I don't know if it's the amount of coffee I've been drinking or is the screen. Now the variable is that I installed this new screen. That's the only thing that's different than what I'm used to. I actually had to lay down because I, and I couldn't work for a little bit because my head hurts so much. Um, and it got me to think that could it be that I'm just having too much, you know, stimulation, right? I mean, yeah, I have a bunch of RGB lights happening here as well. It's kind of cool. But at the end of the day, I think it was just like maybe too much for my brain to handle. The good news is that after about a week, my, my brain got used to it and it seems fine. And I have blue light blocker glasses as well. And those help a little bit too. I know I can set it up so that it will have the eye saver mode, but the eye saver mode, they just not very good. It's either too dim and I have to strain my eyes looking at it. So if I'm on eye saver mode, I can't adjust the brightness. So I kind of wish that is calibrated maybe a little bit better or it's just me I'm the problem and the screen just does not work with me and that's okay as well compared to the LG I'm slightly disappointed with the M7 monitor the LG version they actually allow you to have picture in picture and picture by picture mode with this it really just acts as one giant monitor that's what I was really looking for is that picture by picture mode so that I can actually you know, replace my dual screen setup and eventually maybe have like four screen setup. With that being said, other than productivity, I do use this monitor to play my PS5 on. I do like the fact that it has two HDMI port and then also a USB-C port and it will auto switch. So if I turn on my PS5, it will automatically turn this on. In fact, the weird thing is I can actually go inside my monitor and from the monitor, I can turn on the PS5. Uh, through the HDMI, which is weird. And I found that out today. I don't know why, but it's cool. All right. So on the video editing front, having a big screen is obviously better when it comes to real estate. I do have like this giant timeline that I get to edit on. And I think that is very helpful. And of course it really depends on the video editing program that you're using. So there are some programs that takes advantage of a bigger screen or multiple screens. You do see a much bigger screen of what you're editing here and your like final output. And that I think is a huge benefit of having the real estate. I would say when it comes to video editing, having a bigger screen is more helpful. Just to let you guys know, I did color correct this monitor using the Spider 5 Pro and it's a VA panel. It's not the best, it's not the most color correct. But one thing I like about the monitor is the PPI. It's like 108 PPI. Um, so never really had I felt like the lettering or the, you know, if I'm reading text is blurry. I think the PPI is high enough that it did not feel blurry at any time. For video editing, for photo editing, it actually does work pretty well. For gaming, it's great. Uh, it's just when it comes to using like Google Sheets and Office productivity, having multiple screens or the option to do picture by picture is still, I think, the best way to go about it. Onto the speakers. I think that a lot of tech reviewers are being very harsh on the speakers. For me, I find it pretty decent. It works for everything that I pretty much throw at it. So if I'm playing Call of Duty on my PS5, it sounds great, it's loud enough. Uh, there's not much bass and you don't expect that, but it's good enough for your everyday use. The other thing is, of course, it's a smart monitor, meaning that it has Netflix, it has apps that's already installed. So Hulu, Netflix, and a bunch of all the other entertainment apps that you can find is all there as well. I think HBO Max also. Once you're done with work, you don't even have to leave your chair. You just turn on whatever entertainment you know, platform that you have and you can just turn it on and enjoy your night.
does have AirPlay 2, so I use this with my MacBook Pro or my iPad quite often as a wireless dual monitor. I love that. There is a little bit of a lag, but it's not significant enough for you to notice. I also have a Samsung Galaxy Fold 3, and so I do use the wireless DeX function quite often as well. Oh, by the way, I love the remote. It's such a cool thing to have, but I ended up using the remote a lot more than I actually would imagine. The cool thing I want to talk about is the volume rocker. So you can press down and that actually mutes the monitor and you can press down again, it unmutes it, but you can also use this as a toggle up and down uh, as well. So that is pretty badass. And this same thing for the channels over here, you can press down, it turns on the guide and then you can kind of like press up and down to switch channels. So you can really kind of use this as a computer. So I actually do have a keyboard that's currently set up and paired with this right now. Uh, that's how I enter all my passwords. And you can also set up a mouse as well. So in conclusion, I think this monitor is great and I applaud Samsung for trying to bridge the gap between having a TV, an entertainment system, and also a productivity monitor all in one. Uh, it's not for everybody. It certainly is not for me. I'll be returning this monitor, downsizing to a 34 inch ultra wide monitor and see if that's going to actually help my productivity. But for now, the Samsung, we're gonna say goodbye to it. Well, if you guys find this video helpful, Please consider subscribing and liking this video. It'll really help me out there. As well as if you have any recommendation on a better monitor than this and the next monitor or things that I should be checking out, please leave it in a comment. I do check and reply to all my comments. So I look forward to interacting with you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Enact Casavac protocols. Nice. I know we live to fight another day. Hey, Jackson.